This is Chile's Atacama Desert. Its salt flats were formed over millions of years, but underneath it all lies a key ingredient for much of the world's most modern technology. And it threatens to change this landscape forever. I think it has been a tremendous mistake. Lithium mined here is an essential component of the batteries that power electric cars and solar energy stores. It's key for the green transition. Who are the electric cars going to be for? Europeans? Americans? Not for us. But extracting it is causing problems for the people and environment around where the metal is found. Water is life. How are people going to live if there is no water? The Vega wasn't like this in the past. It was all green and big. Look how dry it is now. For generations, Raquel's family reared animals in the Vega de Tilaposo wetland here. As the climate changed and rain stopped falling, that became harder. But it's not the only factor. Look how dry it is now. Why does it have to be like this? Because they take water from here. There's a lithium plant over there where they use a pump to extract water and take it to the mine. Chile is the second largest producer of lithium globally after Australia. Its production is about to increase through nationalizing parts of the industry and encouraging more investment. But there's fears the community here won't benefit. I think that for the cities, maybe the lithium is good, but it also harms us because since they began pumping, we no longer live the life that we used to live here. This is why lithium mining uses so much water. Huge quantities of water are pumped from underground brine deposits deep below the surface. The slurry is collected into these pools under the hot desert sun, evaporating the water and leaving behind the concentrated lithium in the process. Hundreds of litres of water are extracted every hour in this already drought-prone region. The enormous size of these pools is hard to grasp until standing up close. Back on the plain, members of the community give an offering to the only remaining sources of water. Sara, like Raquel, remembers growing up here as a young girl. One day it will end, the mining will end. And what are the people here going to do? Without water, without agriculture, where will they go? It's going to be the end of this town. Maybe I won't see it because of my age, but my children, our great-grandchildren, the whole generation that comes after. It's painful, isn't it? A lot of the lithium here is still untapped, but Chile's government wants to change that. They say it's needed to tackle climate change globally, but indigenous communities here are worried about what it means for the environment locally. We have been forced to change our entire drinking water system, electrical system and water treatment system. There is, of course, the issue of climate change, that it doesn't rain anymore. But the main impact here has been caused by mining, extractive mining. They use millions and millions of cubic meters of brine. It's a terrifying amount. The government says that this is necessary for the world's fight against climate change. What's your response to that? To combat climate change, there should be a greater connection with those of us who know the territory, the indigenous people who have existed for millennia with these landscapes. Decisions are made in Santiago, in the capital, very far from here. Leading his community, Sergio has helped secure some economic benefits and oversight from the companies, but he's still worried about plans to ramp up production. We understand that the world needs to transform conventional energy into renewable energy, and for that, lithium is very important, but we also don't want to be the bargaining chip for that development. The Chilean government says production is being increased in dialogue with indigenous communities and incorporating new technologies to minimize the social and environmental impact. It says it will bring economic opportunities and that 30% of the salt flats and lagoons will be protected. Mining companies also say they are listening. Currently we have 
120 liters per second, and we are going to reduce to close to zero. The Chilean firm SQM is one of the two main players, alongside the US's Albemarle, operating in the Atacama. We have to consider that in Chile and in the world, we need more lithium for the energy transition. At this plant in Antofagasta, the firm is piloting new technologies. If successful, the idea is to roll these out in their Salada de Atacama plants. These include directly extracting lithium from brine without evaporation pools and technologies to capture evaporated water and re-inject it into the earth. The direct lithium extraction we see as an opportunity to reduce our uh, brine extraction while maintaining our current production and also increasing our capacity. This is a kind of a pilot, but in a larger scale, and uh, we are going to just uh, put the same technology into our processes in Salar Atacama. The companies say this transition will begin in 2031, but some in the community are skeptical of this new technology. Faviola is a local biologist at the Los Flamencos National Reserve here. Estas aguas son super bajas. She regularly tests the water in lagoons on the salt flats to monitor any changes from mining in the area. We don't know how the rock below the salt flat will behave if it will resist the re-injection. The water from underground here, rich in salts and minerals, comes from the Andes. It's very old, and she's not convinced it can just be re-injected. Unfortunately, we think the Salar de Atacama is going to be like an experiment to see how this re-injection of water works for lithium extraction. We believe we will be like a natural laboratory. This reserve is home to flamingos, birds the indigenous community consider sacred. Faviola counts the chicks. She says the population has decreased at worrying levels. Lithium mining has changed the lagoons here. Now they are smaller. And we believe on a microscopic level this has had an impact on microorganisms that live in these waters, which has an impact on the flamingos that feed on them. She and her community feel the urgent need to tackle climate change, but they're angry that they seem to be paying the price. Electric cars are not going to be for those of us whose areas deliver lithium. Who are the electric cars going to be for? Europeans, Americans, not for us. For Faviola, protecting landscapes like these means everyone playing their part. If we want to combat climate change, we all have to reduce our emissions.